and, and welcome on this November, early November day. And uh, if you're joining us, you've uh, figured out daylight savings time and uh, in the change that that was made as well. So a uh, welcome here this morning. Let's move into a couple of announcements for this next week and, and into the future. So on this Wednesday is Heart to Heart, 9 a.m. in the morning. That's on Zoom, same place, same time on that. Um, what is new is that we are having our follow-up series to uh, these Sunday messages, which is the Deepak Chopra book, um, The uh, Spiritual Laws of Success. That will be at 6 p.m. on Zoom. So this Wednesday at 6 p.m., we will do a follow-up to this topic. In other words, we're going to go a deep dive into it and talk about the things that we weren't able to get to today. So that is Wednesday at 6 p.m. on Zoom. Uh, next Sunday is the Unity Cancer Support Group at 9 a.m. So before the service, again on Zoom, uh, will be that uh, support group. And um, we do want to give a little time to the Spiritual Center Task Force, which has been doing its work uh, over the past few weeks. Uh, we are moving from phase one into phase two, and Reverend Lisa has an announcement for us uh, for that task force. Reverend Lisa. Thank you, Reverend Jim, and welcome, everybody. Good morning. Um, as some of you know, others may not, Terry and I have had the privilege of co-leading the Spiritual Center Task Force, which has as its charter um, to begin that search for our next space when we can start meeting in person again. And we just completed phase one, which was to create a very clear calling statement. And what I mean by calling statement is we have a mission, we have a vision. What does that look like when we're bringing it alive in the world? And that's our calling. And we had the most incredibly engaged and creative team. And I just want to give a shout out to Cheryl, Jane, Faye, Mary Jo, Nadine, Jessica, Keith, Reverend Jim and Carol, our extraordinary board liaison. All of uh, we met four times and got together and just had an incredible time together. And we came up with a calling statement, which will be coming out in a special newsletter. I don't think it'll be a surprise to anyone. Um, but as we move forward um, into phase two, which is to, to start looking for actual spaces, we'll have some new people joining us. Um, we're really asking that everybody read and bring this calling statement into your heart and into your consciousness and um to because together as a community we want to bring it alive and we'll be we'll be sharing more and more as we go along but i just wanted to give everyone that update and a big huge thank you to everyone who participated Thanks. yes we do want to thank everybody who participated in that task force and it continues into phase two. So if you'd like to participate with, with us on that, um, let somebody know and we'll let you um, we'll let you know how to connect with, with that task force. Um, and then next we have some information on our on our board. So uh, Rebecca Marie uh, will be representing our board of directors with this next announcement. Rebecca, you'll need to unmute. Uh, well, maybe we'll oh, have, oh, there it's we go. Here. It's here. Okay. There was a little uh, technical piece there. Um, in our newsletter, the board made an official announcement that a way that you can participate in shaping the future of Unity of Central Minnesota. The board is seeking community members for the nominating committee for the January 2022 annual membership meeting. At this time, the committee requires a lead person and one to two additional members to fulfill the requirements as set by our bylaws. This is a short-term commitment. We ask that you either contact Reverend Jim or myself through the Unity office, phone or website, or email, I should say, 
and uh, we will reconnect with you to get this committee formulated very soon. Thank you so much for considering a, a position on that committee. Great, thank you, Rebecca Marie, for that information. And next is our opening prayer, and uh, this is from our uh, prayer chaplain of the day. Uh, Christina is our prayer chaplain. Go right ahead. Uh, yeah, you're not able to unmute yourself. Um, okay, now I am, thank you. Okay, great. Unity was founded on prayer, and here at Unity Central Minnesota, we are committed to supporting you in prayer. You can send your prayer requests to the office email, you can call the office, or you can send us a message via Facebook. I will be more than happy to pray with you. Silent Unity can be reached for prayer at 816-969-2000 or via the YouPray app. Today, the word for the day is divine order. Make yourself comfortable right where you are. Take some deep breaths, contemplating divine order. With love, hope, perseverance, trust, and gratitude, may we do what we are meant to do and be who we are meant to be. The divine love that I am speaks through me and touches the heart of others. I am expansive, divine life, love, and wisdom. I am the unifying power of divine love. I am a rippling stream of divine peace. I am the light of good. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Christina. And um, we shout out to all of our prayer chaplains as well as they uh, volunteer their time um, praying with us as a community. So thank you to all the uh, prayer chaplains and then especially Christina today for leading us in prayer. So good morning, everyone. My name is Reverend Jim Ernst, and it is a pleasure to have you here today. And we're so glad that you've joined us for this celebration service on a Sunday morning. One of the things that we value here at Unity of Central Minnesota is the idea of welcoming. So we do, we pride ourselves as being both inclusive, open and welcoming. So that being said, it is my joy to have you here today. So we honor everyone's spiritual path. So know that no matter where you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here today. And I am scanning the Brady Bunch boxes. I don't see anyone new here today. Um, so let me just remind each and every one of us that, um, that uh, we are a community to reach out to each other, uh, say hello. And, um, and we also, uh, and we don't always remind each other, but let's do this today of all the different ways that we have of connecting too with our spiritual center. We've got our, our, our um, website, we've got the website, we have phone numbers for you to call us. You could leave a message. We have email addresses. You can text us. Facebook, we have our Facebook uh, feed as well. Um, all those different ways to connect. And we will, it would be a joy for us to uh, get back to you on that. So next in our service is our congregational song. So uh, this is a chance to, uh, now you will remain muted throughout this, um, but feel free to uh, join along, sing at the top of your lungs. Nobody else will hear you, except for maybe your neighbor. Um, but um, enjoy yourself as we sing this congregational song. Please join us in a call to worship. This is actually from our hymnal. Stand up. The way we do it is potentially a little different from how it was done originally in 1982.
Today's daily word is divine order. I live in harmony with divine order. Life is in constant motion, even if that motion is perceptible to me. When I feel stuck in place or impatient with my progress, I consider the gradual yet orderly pattern of the seasons as they change. The single golden leaf I notice one day will become part of a blaze of color just a few weeks later. The brisk chill in the morning air soon will lead to biting cold and snow. The first tender seedlings of spring will bring bright blooms and a verdant canopy followed by the long sultry days of summer. Little by little, one season turns into the next. My growth and understanding may happen in much the same way. Even if I don't notice changes day to day, my life is always in motion and in order. From James 2.22, you see that faith was active along with his works and faith was brought to completion by the works. I'm not worried about tomorrow, today I declare Freedom from yesterday, mistakes of the past Today all things are made brand new And don't it feel good to know that all is well and unfolding as it should I can change my reality By changing my mind Perfect peace, joy and happiness Is yours and it's mine I am loved and so are you, so are you. And don't it feel good to know That all is well and unfolding as it should I let me hear you say all is well all is well even spirit is directing me right now all is well all is well all is well and unfolding as it should I am cloaked in the spirit, I am fed by the divine, I am one with all that is, my soul is free from time, I am blessed and so are you, and don't it feel good to know that all is well, don't it feel good, all is well, just to know how she ends that and we do we want to thank judy for that a little bit of gospel for us in, uh, this morning and uh, judy is a minnesota native here and we appreciate her music and her talent as well so thank you judy so uh good morning everyone my name is reverend jim ernston and uh, today we are going to uh, talk a little bit about and investigate uh our new book if that focuses in it's there we go your virtual background is i know my in. virtual background is taking over anyway it is deepak chopra the seven spiritual laws of success what i love about this book and uh the subtitle of it is a practical guide to the fulfillment of your dreams so what i do is uh, i do i focus on that practical sense of my spiritual life 
So that's we're going to be talking about that for the next seven weeks. Before we even get started, I did want to say hello. I wanted to shout out to those folks on Facebook. Uh, good morning to everyone out on Facebook uh, who has chosen to uh, experience our celebration service through Facebook um, instead of Zoom. So some of us are on Zoom, some of us are on Facebook, but welcome, welcome, welcome to those people on, um, on Facebook or who are listening and watching this maybe on a Monday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday. So know that as well. If you have missed a service, go to YouTube, go to our website, and you can always see our message. You can always experience um, our service um, whenever you're ready. It could be 3 a.m. on a Thursday morning, and you could uh, experience that as well if you wish. So again, the seven spiritual laws of, of success, a practical guide. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to talk about that on a Sunday morning, and then we're going to do that deep dive on a Wednesday. So you've heard already uh, within our announcements that on uh, Wednesdays at 6 p.m., we're going to meet for an hour and a half. We're going to talk about um, those things that we can dive in deeper or also those things that we weren't able to get to. So again, 20 minutes on a Sunday, we're not able to get to everything that's within that chapter, within that book. So um, yes, but before we talk about these individual laws, these seven concepts that the, the author Deepak Chopra has defined, he calls these seven things that we can do, these seven practical things that we can do as definitions of success. These are the definitions of success within our lives. And he's, he's careful to define this because what he says is, this is true success that we're going to be talking about over these next seven weeks. So be careful is what he's saying, Deepak Chopra, be careful because Success for some people may be masquerading as not true success. In other words, masquerading as that nice house, that fancy car, those stylish clothes. He does not consider that to be true success. True success for this author is, and I'm going to quote him directly from the book, is the experience of the miraculous. It is the unfolding of the divinity within us. That is what Deepak Chopra calls success, <clears throat> pardon me, success, the experience of the miraculous, the unfolding of the divinity within us. And it will remain unfulfilled, he tells us, unless we nurture that divinity within us, that love within us, that love that we define as that, as our, as, as that creative power. Exactly. What's interesting is to me, at least for my definition, that almost exactly mirrors what unity principles tells us as well, that we are divine ourselves, that the unfolding of the divinity is what, what defines our success in this life. So as I'm reading through this, in, through this book, The Seven Laws, again, for probably the third time, I'm just struck by how much it feels like unity with different words. So it is, he's used words to define these principles a little bit different than we do, but it's exactly the same stuff. In other words, truth is truth, whatever word, whatever English word you want to give to that. So that's what success is, according to the author. It's tied directly to our divinity and the ability to create. He's, so he talks about divinity. He talks about divinity within us and our ability to create. So already within the first couple of pages of this book, Deepak Chopra is presenting unity principles one, two, and three right there for us. Now, of course, he doesn't call them unity principles, but he talks about the divine. He talks about how we have inherited that creative process within ourselves and that we move through life with that creative power. Now, the abbreviated, of course, the abbreviated version of those principles for us, instead of going through all of the, uh, the five unity principles, I'm just going to say one, two, and three. God is, I am, and I create. Those are those unity principles within our lives. 
The author is telling us that because of our divinity, because of our creative nature, several things happens. Our essential state of being is that of pure consciousness, is what he would say. Let me say that again, because it's, it's kind of a, a deep statement. Our essential state of being in this world, on this planet, as humans, is that of pure consciousness. But what does he mean? What is, what is the definition of pure consciousness for the author? It's that we live in the field of all possibilities. Now, now that, again, he's using different words for, our, for, for concepts that we teach differently, but I'm going to stick with the way that he, that he voices these. We live in that field of all possibilities and that we are infinitely creative within that field of possibilities. He would say that absolutely we are unbounded with that creative power and that through, through that power, we experience pure joy. Those are the words that he uses. Field of possibility, infinite creativity, unbounded power and pure joy. Those are the things that he talks about. The other attributes that he says we have inherited from the divine are things like knowledge, silence, balance, invincibility, simplicity, and then ultimately bliss. He calls that bliss. Those are the things that we realize as we work these laws within our lives. So Deepak Chopra tells us that this field, this consciousness that is, this field of consciousness that is all around us, uh, the field of possibilities, I should say, that is all around us, that there is no separation between this field and ourselves. So in other words, we don't just inhabit a, 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 a piece of that. We don't float through it. We are actually part of it. So that field of possibilities is down to the down to the core part of us as well. We're not separate from us. We're not just um, what what um, Charles Fillmore would say. We're not that raisin within the bun. We are actually part of that. We are baked into that absolutely. So there is no separation between this field of possibilities and ourselves. And at this point. As I'm reading this, I'm realizing that everything that he says is, is, is just said a different way for us here within unity. The author then asks us how we experience ourselves. So this is where he kind of instructs us a little bit. He asks us to step back after speaking to this idea of a field of possibilities and he asks us to shine a light on how we see ourselves within that field of possibilities. And he, and he, it shows up a couple of different ways for him. How do we know and understand ourselves or what he calls the self? How do we understand the self? Well, he asks us to look as we, at, at ourselves and how do we refer to ourselves? That's the trick here. How do we live and how do we refer to ourselves? And he says there's two different ways that we do this. He says that there is a self-referral and that there is an object referral. So we're going to explore that just a little bit. The idea of object referral is based on those things that are outside of ourselves. Object referral. We're referring to our place within the universe, within that field of possibilities, we're referring to ourselves by those things that we think are outside of ourselves. Now we know that we're one with everything, so we are ultimately part of that ultimate creation. But if we're object referral by nature, by, by our thought system, then we're comparing ourselves to those things outside of ourselves. We look outside for approval from other people. Where we're poised and anticipating for those things that are going on around us 
and we think that things happen to us. This is what the author would say is a fear-based life. So things are going on outside of us. Things are happening to us. Things are fear. Then, you know, we, we should be afraid of those things that are going to attack us or, or do us harm. That's the object referral. And, but how do we live in this object referral life that we may erroneously think that we're in? Well, what we do is we overcompensate. We try and control everything within this fear-based life. We think that if we can grab hold tight enough, if we can just manipulate and grab hold, that, that we've got a head start on that list of things that we're going to do. So in other words, we create lists. We create 20 things that we've got to do today, and we've got to control every single thing that happens in our day. And, and, and that project, um, or, or we can, that project that we, that we have is, it's, it's just critical that it go our way if we're looking at this as an object of a referral thing. And then we look to others for approval, even within that project that we're working on. Will others approve how this shows up or how it's completed? Then we think that we will be successful and happy. Well, this, the, the, the author says, is, is that ego-based object referral system. It's, so it's all about me. It's all about how I control things and about what others think about me. Object referral is a place where things are important. The outcome of that thing that I view as outside myself. That's the object referral out there. On the other hand, on the other hand, he talks about self-referral and how it's based on divinity within ourselves. So this is what we, this, this referral system that we're looking at is how we actually teach that what we teach, we are within our lives. This is where we experience our true selves. This is where we live without fear. This is where we respect other people and other things as well. That there's no one else that's above us in stature or in respect. No one else is below us in that either. We're equal with each and every person within our lives. And that there is a deep feeling, get this, there is a deep feeling within your heart of equality. That is self-referral, according to our author here. And I love that. Self-referral is a place where we focus on the permanent within our lives. And we know that the permanent is that which is spiritual. It's not those physical things. It's not the things that we gain um, that we think others will approve of outside of ourselves. So self-referral, permanent, is spiritual, and it is respect for all those around us as well, that idea of equality. The author promised us within, within this uh, subtitle as well, that what we're going to be learning from these chapters as we go forward are those things that are practical within our lives. So Let's take a look at those. How do we live this first law, this law of pure potentiality is what it is. So within this field, the law of pure potential, let's just say. And he, and he draws up three things. He's kind of funny because there's three things and then there's another. So you can either view it as there are three things in this uh, list of practical things to do, or you can say that there's four things that you can, you know, that you can practice within your life in order to bring this law of potential into your life. And he calls those daily practices, these things that we bring into our lives as daily practices, silence, meditation, and non-judgment. Those are those three things. And then we'll get to the fourth one a little bit later. He says, when we do these things, that um, just to see ourselves paying attention, um, we will move into. So 
in other words, once we do these three things, these, the silence, this meditation, this non-judgment, then this fourth thing shows up within our lives. And that's actually, uh, you know, spoiler alert, that's actually spending time in nature. So after non-judgment, he says, spending time in nature will point us back to these three things. So let's go through these three, these three, this, these four things, actually. So number one, silence, silence. So spending time, he says, in silence. And this is, remember, this is every single day that he's asking us to do these things. Spending some time without the radio, without TV, without books, without our, without our phones. Spending some time all day long in silence, which, um, you know, also means if you're sitting in silence, turning your phone off so that it doesn't ping you, and then you have to look at your phone. But he's saying that spend a little bit of time every day in silence. And then every so often, what he's saying is not only every day, but then once or twice a year, spend a full day in silence, or maybe two days. He, he says that every once in a while within his life, he spends a full week in silence as well. So in other words, a retreat. He, he takes himself away from the world in retreat for up to a full week. Within the Old Testament, uh, within the book of Psalms 4610, and I love this, and if you're in my office, you will also see this on the wall, posted up on the wall. This is one of my favorite scriptures in both the New and Old Testament. It says, Psalms 4610, be still and know that I am God. This knowing that God can only happen within our lives, this relationship that we want with the divine can only happen when we're quiet enough to hear through the clatter of our own mind. That incessant self-talk that we do, and we're human, so each and every one of us has that incessant self-talk that happens all day long, that monkey mind. The book of Psalms tells us that be still and know that I am God. So number two, meditation. Meditation is that place where we experience pure awareness is what Deepak Chopra was telling us. This is where we organize ourselves. So as we're in meditation, this is where we connect with everything else that is within our lives. Meditation is where we, he would call it, he would call it the place where we lengthen the gap between thoughts. So think about that. Um, it's been estimated that we have over 6,000 separate thoughts that run through our head on every given day. 6,000 thoughts that randomly, sometimes it seems, run through our thoughts. So it's a thought, there's a little bit of gap in between, and then the next thought, right? And, and the incessant thing is that these thoughts, the 6,000 thoughts, many of them, they're just repeats, right? Over and over and over again, we're saying the same thing to us over. They're not necessarily needed. They are habitual. They're not there for a spiritual purpose. Those 6,000 thoughts, the author is saying, allow more time in between those thoughts. Lengthen the gap is what he's saying. And when we learn to meditate, just a few minutes a day, we allow those thoughts the ability to slow down, and then we can incorporate everything else within our lives that we know to be good. So what he's saying is when we practice meditation, he's, we invite enlightenment into our lives. We can experience inspiration within our lives. We can have those imaginative thoughts. But if we continue to, to entertain those 6,000 thoughts over and over and over again, like, and, and just over, just without any gap in between, we're blocking out the imaginative thoughts. We're blocking out the inspiration that could be ours instead of the incessant self-talk, that, that, that self-talk that we have. We can get to know ourselves at a deeper level through that meditative practice so that we can experience things like peace, so that we can know joy, 
more often in our lives. That's where we want to get to. It's no fun, those, those 6,000 thoughts over and over again. That's, that's like no way to live. We want to get to that peace and that imagination and that inspiration. That's where we want to be. And that gives us joy ultimately within our lives. So I'm, I'm throwing this out there for, for everyone or for myself initially, myself mainly, and I'm, gonna in, I'm going to invite you to join me as well. I'm renewing my old practice of meditation within my life. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna invite you to join me as well. We're gonna design, I'm gonna design a way that I can bring that meditative practice into my daily life as well. But I'm also going to um, bring us the possibility of bringing this together in a, uh, a sitting practice. This is something I experienced uh, many years ago and coming together as a community and sitting in silence for a few minutes, even if it's once a week for 20 minutes or, or maybe ultimately 30 minutes once a week can be a powerful experience. It can, you just don't know unless you've experienced sitting with others of like mind and that energy that you can bring to that moment. This is where we're gonna have a chance to learn insight meditation. So we're gonna have a, a section maybe um, that is a little, uh, that's gonna be some instruction. And then the, the second half of it's gonna be actually a, a sitting where we get to sit in silence together. That insight practice, that mindfulness practice that we can do it. Um, the, my, my only hesitation for, for this is that we know that uh, with COVID it might be a little tricky uh, because ultimately my, my first choice is to do this together, uh, to do this together in person, uh, but we'll figure something out. Using inspiration, we'll figure something out. So watch for an announcement, um, probably the, in this next Friday's newsletter, newsletter as we move forward with this idea of uh, a community uh, sitting or, or this um, mindfulness practice that we can do together. So number three, uh, the, the authors talk about silence, meditation, and now non-judgment. I'm gonna quote A Course in Miracles. One of A Course in Miracles 365 daily lessons asks us to practice non-judgment within our lives. Early on in the workbook, it says, and you do this throughout a full day, you, you, every half an hour, or every so often, you, you, you ask yourself, or you state to yourself, I should say, and quote, Today, I shall judge nothing that occurs. Today, I shall judge nothing that occurs. A Course in Miracles. So it's asking ourselves to look at those things in our world, those things that appear to us without judgment, with non-judgment. And um, this is part of that um, course learning process as well of non-judgment. Um, Austrian philosopher and poet Franz Kafka draws a connection between this idea of non-judgment and silence. So he's, he's joining together this idea of silence and, and, and non-judgment as well. When he says, and I'm gonna quote, so this is uh, Franz Kafka, Austrian. You need not even leave your room. Remain sitting at your table and listen. You need not even listen, simply wait. You need not even wait, just learn to become quiet and still and solitary. The world will freely offer itself to you to be unmasked. It has no choice. It will roll in ecstasy at your feet. So he's asking us to to participate in that idea of silence and that non-judgment will automatically be a piece of that process. And then our author is saying on a daily basis. So that's non-judgment. Number four, so he's saying, if you do all these things, what naturally comes up is a love of nature. Spend time in nature is what Deepak Chopra is telling us. This is where we get to create a sense of unity with the rest of creation. So we know that we're all one. This is where we get to feel that. This is in our heart. 
This is when we walk through the woods. This is when we sit on our, our back balcony and experience fresh air or sunshine or whatever it is. Spending time in nature. This is where we connect to creation and the creator itself. This is where we appreciate that creative power. So here's where we put all of these things, this law of pure potentiality into practice. Here's where we, I think, that we realize that our work with, and let me, let me pause here because this is kind of shifting gears a little bit. This is important, I believe. So we're learning about in our, in our first chapter, this law of pure potentiality. And as I was studying this, as I was doing the research for this, as I was getting quotes for this talk today, I realized that what we're doing here or what we have done in our spiritual center task force, this work that um, Terry and, and Reverend Lisa has guided us through as a, as a community, as a spiritual center, that work is pure potential when I thought about it. That is the pure potential within our lives. This work that we're doing to realize our calling, to realize our purpose as a spiritual center. And I ask myself, do we really believe that? So this work that we're doing, can we believe that that is tapping into that pure potential. So we're looking for that definition. And now with phase two, we're looking for that next step into, into the space that we will inhabit in order to do this calling within our community. Do we really believe that we have that field of potential to draw on? In other words, can we walk the talk is what I was, is what came to me. This task force is the walk of the talk that we do. And I'm going to say yes. Can we practice what we preach? In other words, and again, I'm going to say yes, we can. This is our chance to bring it forth. Do we believe that we can have whatever it is that we want in our next space? Do we believe that we can envision what that space will allow us to be at our core? We've taken the steps to vision. That was one of our processes. We've taken this, the steps to create a calling statement. And we're going to share more of that in our newsletters and, and next week as well. We've gone into the silence. So if you were part of that uh, task force, you know that we went into the silence we utilize that step that Deepak Chopra has talked about. We went into the silence to see what our purpose looked like. We allowed that to bubble up into our consciousness. We experienced what it looked like spiritually. We've used guided meditation to allow that divine inspiration to pour over us. And now, we move into that next phase of this task force, this phase of pure potentiality without judgment. These things just fell into place. These things, which, we, which the author's calling pure potentiality is just coming together for those things that we're doing in the world together as a community. That perfect space where we come together with a grand purpose. I'm going to say, yes, 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 we can do this. And we are doing this. We've come together and we are doing this. So join us within that task, that task force as we move forward into that next phase too. So when I looked at this book and, and as I'm doing this book, I've probably gone over, over my time already. Um, there were so many things that we could touch on. And within this short amount of time on the Sunday, I couldn't get to everything that I wanted to talk about. That's why we're going to go into depth on Wednesday. Please join me on Wednesday. We're going to talk about different things like how do we find balance in this world 
with our spiritual practice. So the word balance is something we're going to explore on Wednesday. We're also going to talk about this idea of coexistence with the possibilities of what might seem like opposites in our world. This idea that Deepak Chopra calls the quantum soup within our lives, that, bar that paradox between stillness and then movement and how we unleash our creativity within the world. So join me on Wednesday at six o'clock. I promise it's gonna be fun. I promise it's gonna be informative. Um, it'll, it'll bring us together in a good way as well. So I can't let you go without a, an affirmation for this week. This week's affirmation, write this down. Um, and if you need, you can bring this recording back up anytime in, in, the, uh, in the coming week or affirmation this week. I live the values of silence and non-judgment in my daily life. I am unbounded. I am joy. One more time. I live the values of silence and non-judgment in my daily life. I am unbounded. I am joy. Know that I love you. I bless you. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I behold the Christ in you. Namaste. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love, to the sweetest kind of life. Get ready, get ready, my so everything I've ever done everything I've ever seen everything I've lost or won everything I've ever dreamed has brought me here to the present moment here to a new beginning here and I'm seeing life so clearly now get ready my soul I'm diving in, get ready, my soul. I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love, to the sweetest kind of life. Get ready. Get ready, my soul. Cause here I go, deeper, deeper, deeper than I've ever been before. Here I go, closer, closer, closer to my sacred. Here I go Deeper, deeper, deeper than I've ever been before Here I go Closer, closer, closer to my sacred source Get ready my soul I'm diving in Get ready My 
soul I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love to the sweetest kind of light get ready get ready my soul Get ready, get ready, my soul. We are so grateful for Daniel Neymar and his music within our lives. He is a blessing to us and our lives. So we take this time to move within during this time of meditation as we see that Christ candle being lit as a representation of that light, that Christ light within each and every one of us. We can use this candle to focus on as well during meditation practice, if you wish. So you can focus on that flickering flame and close your eyes, but I invite you to sit back and relax. With each exhale to drop a little deeper into this time of quiet. Dropping into this natural state of learning to be in part of that silence within our lives. Part of that field of potential within our lives. These periods of silence, this meditation is how we come to know those things that are important in our lives. We focus on those spiritual qualities those things that endure. The love, the joy. That creative power, this is where we tap into that. We focus on our consciousness. We let that become our reality. We let go of everything else. We learn to slow down those thoughts. We invite that gap to lengthen as we experience the silence within our lives. As we feed that consciousness, we know that our reality is spiritual. It is based on our knowledge that we are divine. It is based on the reality that we are one with all of creation. We use these times of quiet and silence and meditation in order to turn within and to open ourselves up to that divinity. This time I can either focus on that breath, that inhale, and that easy exhale. Or if I'm watching that flame, I can stare at that flame 
nothing else for the next moment or two, for the next minute or two, as we gently move into that quiet space. And as we begin to come out of this silence, we focus on that law, pure potentiality that expands our life with that awareness of our connection to divinity. It helps us realize that we live a life that cannot be contained, that is unbounded. And we are blessed with this knowledge. We take a deep breath. We move around gently. If you've got your eyes closed, we open those eyes. and become aware of the room around us once again. Namaste. Thanks, Reverend Jim, for that powerful meditation. And now it's time we, from that quiet place, we want to acknowledge and remember all the good that is in our life. We celebrate abundance and prosperity that we have and that we share. And we know that in order to, for this ministry to keep going, it's uh, relying on your gifts. And it, it's your gifts that allow us to do what it is that we've been charged to do and to take this message out to the, uh, our community. Here's our mission statement. We are a vibrant, inclusive community of spiritually centered people, empowering each other to celebrate love, peace, joy, and abundance in all. And we celebrate that abundance by giving a gift to Unity of Central Minnesota. You can do this via PayPal or the donate button on the website. You can send a check in, you can do it through your bank. Um, and the other part of giving to the community is through your sacred service. You can all reach out to Rebecca Marie as she is the sec sacred service coordinator and she'll be glad to help you find ways that you can give to this ministry. In the book of Malachi, it says, God says, put me to the test to see if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you 
an overflowing blessing. And so now we're going to say our offering blessing together. We'll say this together. Divine love and abundance as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, and all that I circulate. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now we'll go into our peace song. And please join me in our prayer for protection. I will say the words in white. You will respond to those in black. The light of God surrounds me. I am, I am the light, the light of, God. of God. The love of God enfolds me. I am, I am the love, the love of, of God. God. The power of God protects me. I am, I am the, power the power of, of God. God. The presence of God watches over me. I, I am, am the presence, presence of, God. of God. And together, wherever, wherever we are, are God, God is, is all, all is well. well. Okay, at this time, I, I do want to, Facebook, hang on, don't leave. You, I would love for you to participate in this next thing. One of the things that I... Um, quite often forget to do is uh, first of the month wish everyone a happy birthday whose birthday is in November but because I've um, forgotten that what we're going to say is anyone who's had a birthday in September October November <laughs> we're singing to you so unmute yourself and we will sing a, a quick rendition of a happy birthday so you know if, if it's your birthday give us a wave so we can focus on you and oh, Cheryl's got a birthday coming up. Uh, maybe Denny as Denny. well. Oh, Denny's yeah. got to uh, comb his hair if we're going to look in at the past. And wish him a happy birthday. <laughs> so here we go. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to, to you. you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. To you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Cheryl, Denny, everybody. And everybody. everybody. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Yay. Yay. So happy birthday, everybody out there. Now is the time where we, and I see some hearts as well. So yes, we share that love with everybody out there for, that, for those birthdays. Um, and so here's the time where we move into gratitude. I'm going to say goodbye to all those out there in Facebook land. Thank you for joining us. Um, know that you can always pull this back, this recording back up throughout our week. But I'm going to say goodbye. Please join us if you want to participate in our Zoom uh, gratitude sharing events, a uh, piece of this service. Uh, log out of Facebook and come back into Zoom and you can be part of that as well, where we get to share what is what we're grateful for uh, within our lives and we get to, to know each other a little bit better and in a deeper way. So goodbye, Facebook.